The Wannabes, Season 2, Episode 4. My name is JD. And my name is Wasabi. What's up? What's up? Not not everyone. It's just you. How are you doing, JD? I'm good, everyone. Um, hanging in there. Uh, we took a bit of a hiatus. I hate to use the word hiatus. We took a gap week. Um, because yeah, gap week's way better. Because of the election. Um, I don't think any of <laughs> either of us... We're in the mood to talk about Melee, and I don't think anyone was really in the mood to hear our thoughts about the election. So we, <laughs> we took our time, and we're back. Um, we're also back to morning recordings, and I already feel an energy difference mm -hmm. um, because I think we are proper adults, and it is 8.47, and we – did you have your coffee? Do you drink coffee? No. No, I don't drink coffee. I was actually just reaching for my water bottle. Uh, I don't actually drink coffee. I run on pure, unadulterated will energy, unless it's, like, <laughs> crunch time. I heard the joke where someone goes, I don't drink coffee, I run on anxiety. And coffee's like a good little dose of anxiety, so I feel that. Yeah, it's anxiety in a cup, for sure. Oh, no doubt. It smells great, though. It smells great. Can't argue with that. But I had my cup, and I'm ready to go, man. So I have a whole list of like small topics. Uh, we talked a little bit about the topics you want to bring up. Um, so first and foremost, we recorded our 15 minute question yesterday, which is something I really love. I mean, we're two for two with just sick questions and guests yeah, coming on. Yeah, it's a great segment. I actually yeah. really love it. It feels way more personal. Yeah. And I think that's the goal for season two, right? To get more personal. I think so. Definitely. I think so. You know, that that sounds correct, doesn't it? I wasn't thinking about it. Like, this isn't planned, but season two is definitely more personal. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, we're going more for, like, quality and, and what, are, like, being on pr here on purpose. If we don't have anything to talk about, we're not going to bullshit, um, even though it sounds like we're stalling right now. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, so last night, we, we're going to throw it at the end of this, this episode, but... Um, we had uh, a new friend, Justin, come on, and that got our, I'll say it, it got our Melee boners up, and so we were just so excited. We were going to keep talking, and we had to cut it, but um, I'm ready to just talk with you now where we're at. Let me just ask, like, how's the new job? I got to ask. Dude, it's been crazy. I don't think I've worked, like, so hard on my first week ever. <laughs> Oh, wow. Like, normally you're, like, onboarding and, like, there's a little time and, like, mm -hmm. just from the get-go, like, more startup than start I've experienced in my past startup, startup company, but, like, just from the get-go, it was, like, very clear. It's like, ah, you gotta be on, you know? You gotta do your meditations before you enter the bracket, you know? Wow, okay. And, but it's been so much fun. I think it's, like... It's been so challenging in such like a hype way. It actually feels like something that I'm going into where I have to like constantly remind myself that there might be some mistakes and I might not know everything immediately. And I have to kind of just like always be active and always pay attention and always listen and like figure it out as I go. And I think that's really interesting because I, I guess I'm feeling like a little bit of like of imposter syndrome because like for the last four years for context, like I was a clinical research coordinator. So like, even if it was a new job, a new company, it was something that I knew how to do. And now I'm making this step up to a project manager for this company that, you know, honestly, like it does a re really amazing thing where it tries to help further research uh, for people with rare diseases. And, you know, I'm talking to like foundation leaders and parents who really care about it and you know it's personal for them and so it's like how do I make sure that I am ready for that so that I can like honor and respect and do justice for them in their community so I think like I'm really excited for it but it's like pushing me it's like it's it's a completely new thing and that's everything I wanted but I've definitely worked like a 12 and 12 hour 10 hour week already <laughs> oh wow okay well, that's first off, I that's an amazing I know you've told me this before, but going into more detail, like that's such an amazing thing you're doing. And I 
I could see how that that's like a, a driving force in, in a way and kind of something keeping you, you know, eyes on the road is, is just the magnitude of, I guess, maybe not the magnitude, but the seriousness of it and, and how important these people find this work to be. So, I mean, good for you, man. That's that's amazing. Like, do you feel that is an added stress or do you think it's just sort of another thing that's keeping you in the moment and then it's just typical like difficult job first week still learning type of anxiety definitely more the latter one like i don't think it's stressful it's just like understanding where you are in relation to the community it's like if someone came in to the, like the mailer community right and not being you know part of it inherently you know you're coming in as a guest so there's a certain amount of respect that you give right and mm -hmm. so i think it's just something to have but definitely in terms of like first week like you know i kind of like ha you know have a little bit of like perfectionism where it's like i hope like i don't mess up here and i hope i don't mess up here or stuff like that but like i'm kind of just trying to remind myself like they hired me for a reason i made it through the interview process it's a very hard and intensive interview process so I made it and I gotta like trust that they saw something and it's okay if like I make a mistake you know just like don't make it again you know and I think like I'm, I'm kind of battling with that and it's the first time in my career where I've kind of had to battle with that mm -hmm. you know before I feel like I came in and I'm like yeah I know what to do like it's a clinical research coordinator but like I'm but this one really feels like a push in the right direction where they will both like support me and challenge me a lot as a project manager great i mean shit so week one in the bag do you feel do you feel like those hmm how am i, how am I gonna phrase this because i don't want to do the the <clears throat> typical like does it feel like you're learning how to wave dash you know I, I, but we do frame a lot of our learning in the lens of, of melee. But let me just ask, like, do you feel like the muscles of improvement are still sore? Like, I'm really curious yeah. about, yeah, like that, you know, you, you're just an influx of information and you need time to soak it in. Like, do you feel like you're in the middle of that process right now? 100%, dude. I've been, I'm like still getting used to, like, I haven't worked since May, right? So I'm still getting even used to like, being in zoom meetings for half the day and zoom fatigue and and all of that but <sighs> on top of that like yeah like i kept like a running notes tab like on on a google doc of like you know anything that anyone says helpful because it was just like an info dump for me and i'm at page 25 right now for context oh my god yeah of notes that i haven't had a chance to like really look back and review fully like i've been control effing but that's about it and so, you know, if I had to give, like, an analogy to it, it's kind of like when you go to a tournament and, you know, you're not even the best at, like, your local or anything like that. You're just, like, a solid player, you know, from New York or whatever, whatever. And then you go to a major and you play all these, like, Midwest, West Coast, s Southern players. And you're just not used to their styles. You know, there's no mm. comfort in the way that they play. Like, you know, there's no comfort in them. They don't wait where you want them to wait. They don't attack where you want them to attack. And you're trying to just piece it together on the fly. And you realize that the world of Melee is a lot bigger than what you thought it could be. And I think that's what uh, this position, this new job feels like for me. I was thinking in the lens of a TO, because comparing this to to playing seems seems like a stretch but i see what you mean like there's no comfort in these new ha these new like responsibilities or like things being thrown at you would you say it's like um maybe um going from uh, uh being like a volunteer at a like a uh, you run the bracket at a major you run like one pool you're like a pool volunteer that's what it's called pool captain mm -hmm. and then you come home and you have to run like 128 man regional is that is that because it's like different but the same is it something like that you're gonna be so mad jd but i have no idea what you're trying to go for here what do you mean I've, it's like i've you're... never to'd in my life oh I've okay always, i've always you know me i'm a player at heart so i only <laughs> can relate to playing it's like spectating. It's like playing and then starting a podcast. You know, it's the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Yeah. 
<sighs> well, regardless of the metaphor we use, it's really exciting to hear you kind of going through these motions because, you know, there's a world where we come on and you, you're like, yeah, it's, you know, it's been a slow week. You know, I'm, I'm, I like my boss. Like you have to like find things to like about it. But the fact mm-hmm. that it's, it's already like such a vehicle for growth that, um, I could see it already, man. You're, you're jazzed and you're challenged and that's exactly where you want to be. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. It just feels like I can't do the same thing as I was doing before, but also that I should trust that everything I did before, like, has merit, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I have to, like, like if I did everything I did before, that's solid, but I need to give my a little extra to really do a good job, and that little bit of extra is the unfamiliar part about it. It's, like, just trying to, like, add something to the way that you play in Melee, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. everything you do you know nets you a solid like 13th ninth place finish at your local but to get the top eight you got to give a little bit more you got to approach with jc shine brother that's, that's I mean, the key yeah that that is the new wave right now <laughs> yeah no i i hear you man i hear you it's so funny how we just have these so highly specific <laughs> melee except for the to thing i learned my lesson i'll never give except a to metaphor thing get out of here brother but whatever <laughs> unless it's brooklyn kumite i've never to'd in my life all right it's like going from brooklyn kumite and then someone says hey do you want to um do you want to run see me on land online and you're like well i guess i kind of know this i won't well, introduce yeah, but, metaphors but, but then i ever job. then every time i say no because i gotta play <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right <sighs> <sighs> well all right man any any other because i that makes me want to jump off into some other topics well, uh anything no, no, else you yeah wanna... no I, I no. Let's go to your topics. I'm so curious because you didn't tell me yours at the at the start. Well, I have. Here's here's the thing. I have like, I just jotted down at like six things, right? But they're all, all, right, all right. They're all somewhat related. Um, I'm just gonna start with the big one. I think I did. I tell you this that I'm getting a dog. You did tell me you were getting a dog. Getting a dog. Super confirmed now. Let's so go. Let's yeah. go confirm. Confirm dog. We Rescue? got pictures coming in. Um. Apparently it's getting cute and chubby, like it's born already. We put the deposit down. Is that... it a puppers? Is it a rescue puppers? No, Is it it's... a rescue doggo? So we we couldn't really go with rescue unless it okay, was like right. a rescue that specifically does medium sized hypoallergenic calm dogs. Because one, I'm allergic, and two, we're living with my grandma, so we needed to kind of know yeah. what we were getting ourselves into. That's fair. Your whole point was moving to take care of your grandma, so yeah. that's fair. Exactly. And so th- we're getting a uh, ca- uh, a Charles Cavalier poodle mix. Well, I mean, yeah, poodles hyper energetic. That's hype. That's they're hype. So, they're so cute, dude. They're so cute. When are they going to be on our thumbnail? Um, immediately. No, no. Sick. Actually, it's a. Ter- they look like little pigs. <laughs> Baby puppies uh, are ugly, dude. But all right, we'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> Yeah, I'll wait till that we can add like a Smash GG merch on it or something. Oh, no doubt. We'll we'll market the fuck out of this dog. This dog will pay for itself. I'll tell you that much. All right, Um, let's go. (laughs) So that's exciting. Um, Because we got like a second confirmation today, and I was just looking around my apartment, and it's kind of a mess because we're moving, but also we don't really, you know, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, we are not allowed to live like this anymore. This is going to be just a fire under our ass to be much cleaner, to be more active, to, like, go for walks every day. Like, it's it's kind of a lifestyle change, which I'm really excited for, which is also the same as, like, my other topic I want to talk about, which is looking at moving as this opportunity, right? I brought it up before, mm-hmm. but, you know, we're moving in. Oh, my God. It's, it's only two weeks now. Jeez. 20, yeah. yeah, the week of Thanksgiving, the 29th, so uh, two weeks in a day, um, the movers are coming and then we're, we're out. And um, it's like a whole mindset shift already that I'm like trying to piece together and, and just get through the days and, and figure everything out. But um yeah, it's it's really strange. Like I can't even predict how I'm gonna feel. I just have, mm-hmm. I just have like goals and and habits I want to shift and and I want to utilize that as best as I can. 
And so I guess I'm just trying to like talk it out. Like, yeah. what? Can I ask a question? Absolutely. So, you know, I kind of feel like the theme of one of the like the god awful themes of 2020, because it feels like a decade shoved in a year, <laughs> yep. is this idea that this idea of pause, that everyone's life went on pause and mm-hmm. we're kind of just waiting for it to restart and you know obviously COVID's going to be around for a while thanks to you know the incompetence of our government and stuff like that but mm-hmm. you're moving forward with your life and like is sort of the weight of do you think the weight of that is hitting you and and I kind of just wanted to more I didn't have a specific question you know but as a friend I'm really excited because I'm in the middle of that right now, too, with a job and knowing that I'll be moving to Cali in Jan of 2021. Like, I just found an apartment and and, we're all set. Yeah. Um, But, like, (laughs) our lives are moving forward in a time that we've been told for months that it's been on. It has to be on pause. And I'm just really curious on, like, if that's hit you yet. Because that's really exciting. At least I'm really excited for my own self. And so as a result, I'm really excited for you. <laughs> it's, you know, similar. Yeah. I mean, for, for sure. There's, I think right now, and it's on the top of my list, right? Getting a dog is very much so a uh, uh, a galvanizing kind of thing. It's like, oh shit, this is going to be uh, the best. It, having a dog is awesome and it's going to be a lot of work. We're going to have to train it, but it's going to be like a new thing, a new kind of passion in our lives, a new source of love. Right. So that is huge. And I'm going to be spending more time with my family, which is big. You know, I, I, I'm going to be actually living in my grandmother's house in, in the separate apartment. So I get to see her without being worried about like my exposure. Like we're going to be exposed to the same thing. So it's not a big deal going up there anymore. So, things like that are great, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, we're all, Ashley and I are also, and this is kind of, I might be dropping this at the bad time, but it's, it's all relevant. We're, we're going to be looking at rings in January. So wow. we're, we're very much taking that seriously. Damn. That's exciting, man. Could yeah. You, I mean, you know, early for a congrats, but I'm excited for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's I mean, all... you guys are moving into a house together and getting a dog, so I feel like the dog's more official than anything else. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so it's just kind of at this point we're like, yeah, we should do this, right? She was excited about it. I was like a little more matter of fact, but that's because I'm trying. Uh, it's to... expensive. It's pricey. We yeah. need this. We need to start throwing ads on this podcast. I, guess. I know to pay for my wedding, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so a lot of these things are moving forward, and at the same time, it's like I still feel as though um, my career is not where it wants to be, and mm-hmm. that's that's just a thing where um, I can get stuck into a rabbit hole of like, did I do enough? Am I pushing hard enough? Am I working towards anything? Am I applying? Am I like, you know, I, I need to take everything kind of in tandem and, and make sure that I'm not um, criticizing myself unfairly, right? It's it's a, a tricky scenario where I don't want to like, I don't want to let myself off the hook and fall into bad habits, but I also don't want to ignore the fact that like shit got derailed. I did, you know, start and stop. But I, I started therapy for a couple months. Like I did work on some, you know, anxiety issues. I did continue to talk to you and, and make things in my spare time. And, you know, I, I did do some things, so I don't have to sit here and think, Oh, did I do enough? I could just look at these things coming up and, and, you know, just, be okay with that and, and be happy for it. not even just okay. Be excited for um, like the reality of what's happening. So it, it's a, it's a convoluted answer, but it's, it's, you know, it's all I really have without speculating wildly or like clinging to some fantasy, crazy idea of what to do next, which I'm prone to do. But yeah, 
it's also weird because I'm moving back to my hometown. Mm. You know, which in itself is it, it it can feel like a step backwards, even though it is a new apartment. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of like a hand me down apartment because we're taking over for my sister. There's just these little things that can be construed as moving backwards or not being where I want to be. And I just need to chill and take the opportunity to save a bunch of money and, you know, just be all right with where, where I'm at. That's my answer, I guess, <laughs> to, to your non-question. My non-answer yeah. to your non-question. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought that was really good. I mean, that's fair. I mean, like, I, I totally feel that. And it's like, especially going back to, like, the, the hometown. I think it's, like, it's weird because it, like, it's definitely a step forward. But it's also two places that you're, like, familiar with. And so, like, I think that's going to be really interesting. And then, of course, like, as you said, like, there's some, obviously some things that are falling in place and some things that are still still on pause right now. So it's not, like, fully, fully. Right. But, like, the motion is, you know, starting to happen, which I think is, I wanted to note because I think that's really interesting and cool. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think getting back into the wannabes has been a, a cool mindset shift you know it kind of reminded me of why we started in the first place which um one is just the conversation is is always great and i always just feel good after recording um but then you know if i'm going for a walk let's say i'm like walking to the deli or something and i'm kind of in in that process of like oh what can i do what could we do what like the optimistic anxiety spiral i guess mm-hmm. like the the spiral upwards of possibilities it it, it kind of stems from um the creation of just a thing and having this be a, a reliable thing is again like I, I don't know if i could say this enough just it's so foundational it's like yes i might not have you know i might have played a lot of video games this week but i made a thing i did a thing and i released it and you know tweeted about it and and posted it on blah 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 you know that's that is valuable it's it's for for a lot of times it's enough and especially when i can look back and say this experience now is one that i did not have before and this comfortability with editing and and talking into a microphone and equipment etc it's like oh i'm fine like shit's fine you know what I mean? So that that's been really cool that I, I get to rediscover that um, through this whole process. And we're back to meta commentary about our <laughs> about the thing we're doing at the time yeah. we're doing it. But that's yeah, but true. You bring up a good point, you know, because I think like we've I think the way that, you know, human society always kind of paints things is in scarcity terms mm. like. Mm-hmm oh, I don't have enough of X, or oh, I need to, I don't have enough time for Y, or I, you know, I haven't practiced enough for, to, you know, for this tournament. And I think it's very rare to talk in the opposite way in terms of abundance. And I feel like that's what this podcast kind of forces us to do. Yeah. And it forces us to take a step back and acknowledge the good stuff in our lives, you know, even if there are still other things that are pending or, or not so hot, you know, and I think switching our minds to like an abundance mindset is so important but it sound it feels so clear hearing you talk about it that like just the act of doing this podcast kind of pushes you to that mindset a little bit closer where you have the energy for other things and you know i've been thinking like what is a life well lived and and i'll talk about that actually uh as we get on later in the podcast but you know i think for me i've been thinking is like you want to put do things that give you energy back Mm -hmm. and try to aim for a net zero which is really interesting because that feels like enough and it doesn't mean that everything needs to be perfect but it means that everything that you do in conjunction of each other feels like it's enough and it gives you the energy that you put out and 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 the podcast helps with that a little bit and and so you know that's what I'm hearing when you're when you're talking. 
Oh yeah, it's definitely like um, a fire starter of sorts, and it is an abundance. It's like I I never feel like we can't just you know get some value out of out of a conversation. Um, I'll say it right now. It's better when it's in the mornings. <laughs> we should. We... It is one hundred percent better in the mornings. Just, just better. Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to we talk about it. California time zones. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I might have to do. You know, I I don't mind doing a a, a twelve if you're okay doing if, a nine. If you do an, if you do a nine or a ten, I can do it. I I'm normally up by like six or seven usually. If I could, you want to be up? You want to do a seven? We'll talk, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm awake. You know I'm a morning person, dude. You've stayed over. I've literally practiced for two hours while you were asleep. That's weird. Just kidding. It's not what? weird. I'm, not, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, uh. But yeah, I mean, that's that's why I like doing it in the mornings is I feel as though having it like in my back pocket for the day is just it makes it a better day. It makes me like more mm-hmm. likely to, you know, pick up a piece of garbage on the ground or pick up clothes or something, you know, just like these little things become easier to accomplish once mm-hmm. it's in the back pocket. And I think that could be um, kind of a guiding force into this, just say holiday season or new year. This holiday season is going to be a shit show, um, oh, yeah. which we could talk about. Um, but just having that be a guiding force, like just if you're doing something, be cognizant is it giving you back what you're putting into it then i think that that's gonna lead us into a lot of good decisions and you know positive positive energy and and, and positive output you know that's it yeah i agree i mean that is also why we play melee you know like yeah. it just gives us a tremendous amount of energy to deal with a lot of <laughs> bullshit also yeah you know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> man this feels like a good time for a break let's yeah, let's, let's roll let's roll the quote let's just roll the quote jd roll the quote bam that really reminds me a lot like when you were talking i started to interpret what you were saying in, in a wider sense and in, in this more macro sense of you know, how I treat melee on a week to week basis and then how I kind of live my life. Um, I, I feel like I do that a lot actually with melee where I take lessons from it into my day to day. And, um, I think, you know, after what is it? Five, five and a half, six years now of playing, uh, at least at a competitive level, it's been, um, I feel like it's kind of shaped me into a type of person um, that, that, that kind of adapts and, and thinks of things in a different way yeah. uh, because of the game. And I'm, I'm really interested to see how, how it affects you too. Cause as I said before, again, as a compliment, you have an emotional connection and an intensity that you bring to this game. And I'm wondering how that has affected your life and in what ways have you noticed that? Yeah. Um, so it's like definitely super interesting because I definitely, yeah, like uh, I feel not just smarter and more aware of like my personal life, like socially with people. Like I think I'm really, I'm a really good person to talk to, like just like about anything, like if you have like an issue or like problem solving. But I think it's also really good for like your studies, like because, you know, I figured out like better ways to like study for my classes and tests how to not freak out during a test like I literally when I started taking going back to school and taking tests and stuff I pretty much just saw it as like bracket and I would never like on the like I would like if I didn't remember something I would jokingly be like oh I'm choking but then like you know uh you get so good at practicing these habits these like uh habit training training exercises that you don't even realize that it's so helpful and beneficial to other things in life. All right. So we're back from our break. Great quote. Check out the one V ones again, but you know, I've been honestly, Jay, like, I I know I gave you a heads up about this, but I've been, I don't know. I, this is something I normally don't talk about on the podcast, Mm -hmm. like in great detail. Like I talk about it with you personally, 
but I don't know. I think I kind of want to, yeah, just kind of shoot shoot the stuff because it's been it's been a little rough, you know, like in terms of like dealing with with family and specifically like kind of not kind of my emotive. <laughs> Jeez, I'm fucking up because I'm I'm a little nervous. Yeah. But uh, um, you know, my most emotionally abusive father, and and I think that's like something that I've just had to deal with this week. And I've been pretty transparent about like just the random shit he'll just text me out of nowhere, you know, and and posting it on Twitter and stuff like that to like, as I said, validate that it is unacceptable. And to not sort of feel alone in that, because I think growing up, I like didn't talk about it super much because it was like it honestly like it felt really hard to find people that would relate to it because, you know, you kind of grow up in like, you know, I grew up in Connecticut. So you kind of grow up in these like mostly predominantly, you know, white suburbs. And so like understanding like immigrant and Asian culture wasn't something that I think a lot of middle school or high schoolers really understood right they'll be like oh that's horrible but like they don't understand the nuances of it so I, I honestly didn't really share it for a while and and obviously you know about it and we've talked about it now I share it on Twitter but I think it's time to like kind of just bring it on the on the podcast you know mm-hmm. yeah I mean it, it's totally important to one, I, I like I like your 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 reasoning for kind of exposing it because it is a a little absurd. He's he's kind of an absurd person in a lot of ways, and the fact that it's so harmful is is it's it's hard to read sometimes. It really is, um, and I'm sure that's not even the full scope of it. <laughs> Obviously, it's not the full scope of it, but. Yeah, I'm I'm totally here to to hear you out and and to offer some white guy <laughs> reflection on it, you know. And <laughs> I just went on a rant about white people, but yeah, you're you're white too. Yeah. But you know, you, you're adults <laughs> now. You've lived life longer than a middle schooler has. Sure, it's 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 fair. Barely, um, but sure. Barely, yeah. But yeah, you know, I think the thing that I wanted to like kind of think about and like talk about workshop with you actually is a better way to put it is that i think like now that like my life is kind of moving forward and i'm going to california and and stuff like that i think you know i want to begin to cut ties with them and i think that's like a big step that i haven't really thought about or i would be scared of the consequences or, or what that would mean but pretty much like I've been working to be financially dependent from him for, for, you know, since graduating and definitely was a little bit rougher on a, you know, entry level salary in New York, but it was a start. And this feels like the next like progressive step. And I think the reason why I'm at this point is because when I got those texts kind of just trying to hurt me, right. There was no reasoning or, him listening it wasn't a conversation it was just you know 10 10 texts just trying to hurt me as much as possible i for the first time i felt like i didn't need to respond to them Mm -hmm. and i kind of was on this like kind of edge between this kid version of me filled with like white hot rage having revenge fantasies and and you know trying to figure out how i can hurt him back too for all the times that he hurt me back and sort of this adult will knowing that acknowledging that like i was still really hurt and bothered by it especially getting it in the middle of like a work day but (laughs) that it wasn't something that i needed to actually welcome in my life anymore not that i did before but it was just something that i i should put a concerted effort to to not allow in my life because because I deserve better and I think for the first time I felt like I didn't need to respond and that I was willing to let him have the last word on it because it wasn't worth yeah it just wasn't worth responding to him anymore as a person you know and I think before I kind of always held on to this thought that like 
he'll event you know like he'll eventually see me as a better person not as this villain against him or an antagonist or you know his son honestly <laughs> yeah but the version of a son that he wants doesn't exist in me or in anyone truthfully and there was some clarity between this whirlpool of white hot rage and logic where it felt that I can like that I just wanted to like end my relationship with him and I think that's where that's where I'm at now and I even talked to my mom about it and for the first time because I think she's realizing she's in a tricky spot obviously because she's married to him but she didn't try to like so try to support him or play down my feelings or gaslight me or anything like that she actually just heard me and said i was allowed to be angry and frustrated and what he did was wrong and you know she said don't commit to anything in the future you know just be mad in the present and if you're not mad in later that's fine and you know it's like she has stakes in this too because it means like whether do i whether i come home for christmas or not but and it asked, you know, it kind of begged the question, what does cutting ties with him look like for right now? And I think the process where I'm at is, and truthfully to my mom's truth about this, he is more bark than bite in person. In person, when the family's around, he'll make side comments. He's a mean person. He doesn't look happy. He doesn't try to talk to you, but he doesn't actively hurt you. And then it's over text and phone where he really gets nasty. And where he's you know a troll he's a troll i mean that's that's what trolls do and so i might still go home for christmas to see my sister and my mom because i think especially with my mom that is a relationship that is growing into a much healthier way for you know someone who's had to experience a lot too and 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 has their own traumas and so i think i'm really happy with where our relationship is going and i want to foster that but outside of that, outside of Christmas, which is pretty much the only time I really see my family, especially now that I'm going to be Cal going to Cali, I think I'm just not going to respond to his text anymore. And whether it's in person or not, like in person, I might like give one, two small comments, but I don't think I'm really interested in furthering the relationship at all anymore or hoping or having that hope that it will be a different relationship than it is. So that means... I guess what I mean by cutting ties is really ghosting him as much as I can in person, but especially over texts and phone calls and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you're not a good troll. You're, you're not that type of person. And so to kind of, to match his energy would just be a losing battle. And even, and you know, if, if you get encountered with a troll, you can't feed it, Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I've heard you refer to him as a troll and you kind of said it so offhand that it seems like you think about it. You think about him like that pretty often, right? Or Well, what's funny is I feel like this is the first time I've acknowledged that he's a troll. Okay. Normally, I kind of view him as my oppressor, and which is really interesting. An oppressor being someone I have to like fight against, you know. Yeah. But but it's kind of shifted recently to to him just being a really horrible troll well yeah i mean first because you used to live under his bridge man and now you kind of don't and you might have to cross it every now and then but what's he gonna do like he he really has no power over you besides kind of uh um tugging at the scars of trauma and if that's what he wants to do then he's going to be and if you don't feed that I hope I'm not speaking out of my um, no, no, no. out of my keep, place here. Going. But yeah, yeah if, if, going. if you kind of follow that strategy and and show up, and if he's there, you just give your hey or whatever. Like you know, your your treat him like a uh, a a fraternity brother that you guys had a disagreement and you don't like each other very much, right? Like just mm -hmm. hey, what's going on, and then just focus your energy on the love that still exists around him just not him then wh what's he gonna do i mean if, if you're financially 
uh, independent, if you're emotionally supported through other means, um, and if you just kind of ignore the small attempts, I mean small as in like everything he does is small if it's directed mm. towards you in, in such a way that it's been, um, then yeah, man, like I, I think that's a winning strategy because it's not like you're ex exuding hate yourself. It's not like you're doing anything petty. It's just because ignoring pettiness isn't pettiness. It's that's, you know, just holding firm and being confident and, and all that. Um, a lot easier said than done. And it's going to be obviously a, a, a lot of situations that it's going to challenge that approach and it's going to, you know, you're, in, are you going to block his number? Yeah, so I was thinking that, and I was talking with my mom about that. At the moment, it's up in the table, mm -hmm. but it could just, like, cause more issue if he found out. And, and honestly, like, that's, like, the logical side of it. The other side of it is even if it might be tough, I think it might be more beneficial in the long i guess it's no i don't know honestly it's just more my anxiety like i want to know what he says and and stuff and and be stronger that way so maybe i'm going down the harder path and maybe it might not be the best way so i don't think i'll block him immediately contrary to my tweet actually but i think that i'm gonna try to develop the strength not to respond and and that's sort of my both my mantra and my commitment currently and i think you said something interesting where it was like what it you know you're not being petty not responding is not being petty you know and that's sort of what i alluded to you know in the first half of this podcast of because i've been talking you know well before i say that you know it's it's being like a life well lived a you know the best revenge is a life well lived and so that's something that I talked to my therapist about actually this week and you know growing up you know when you're more powerless you know as a kid you know not being given the love and emotional support that every kid honestly deserves uh you know you you do want like kind of like the some sort of like clear revenge right and in to put it funnily enough in like melee terms it's like winning a money match or, or you know getting the rerun <laughs> tying it back like that. yeah i know you know in a much lower scale but you know i've been trying to think about it as you know because my therapist brought this up a life well lit the best revenge is a life well lived and i really do love my life and the people that are in my life right now and he's just one individual and I think the best way I should try to get back at him is just by moving forward with my life without him in it. And so that's, I guess, me trying to to be petty while not being petty, which is really funny. <laughs> but yeah, like I think that's that's where I'm at. I mean, it feels really nice to talk about, of course. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like it's just he's kind of just like he's not going to be a better person so nope might as well just leave him nope until you have kids and he's like trying to win them over okay eh, i'm not too worried about that <laughs> <laughs> oh man well shit if you ever want have you ever seen um f is for family no i i know it's on netflix though or on Hulu. So it's on a streaming service. Yeah, it's on it's on Netflix, and there's a whole season about um, his dad, and he, he talks about how much his dad, you know, was a piece of shit. Um, back, I think that was in like the 50s and 60s is where it took place, so it was more like mm -hmm. literal physical abuse. But yeah, you know, same shit, and um, I think that might be. It, they explore it pretty thoroughly so if that's ever you mm. know if you ever have some time to check out it's also a funny show but um that's definitely my my the first thing my mind goes to of, of like 
the situation reflected in media uh, i think it's mm-hmm. i think it's a worthwhile thing to maybe check out might be cathartic might be triggering roll Either or roll the dice 50 50 yeah <laughs> but i'm glad you're sharing man that's that's a really difficult thing to bring up and it's it, it it's really uh powerful to have that conversation yeah thanks man yeah no i mean i kind of just wanted to like put it out there as again to like validate it and to kind of keep me accountable i guess to it it's gonna be tough i mean i'm probably gonna slip up a few times but i think that's the path that i need to like kind of just like go for right now and yeah we'll figure out what happens i mean i still want my rerun eventually but (laughs) it's probably not the best you're what like like my run back i mean okay (laughs) the run back oh god yeah i know I know it's a like complicated. It's complicated. It, it has so many layers of trauma and 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 stuff in it. So, but you know, I think that like that is, yeah. I mean, that's sort of where I'm at right now after a really crazy first week of work. Also, so I think that's where I'm at because I know I'll have to give it my all. There, honestly, I don't know how to end this. But I'm I'm thankful for being able to talk about it on the podcast with you. Yeah, well, that's that's a good place to to end. I mean, we have a, a really inspiring conversation that we had last night that we're gonna put mm-hmm. right at the end of this. So don't feel as though that's the note we're ending on. And you know, there's a lot to look forward to. I mean, shit, we could we could probably record another episode. We have enough topics that inspire us that we could record another episode right now. We won't cuz I have to go. But you know, that's that's just think of that. Just think of and you do. You're you're a very positive person. It's just there's going to be some emotional uh um remnants when when talking about that stuff. So what do you plan on doing today? Any any fun activities? Uh I got to get a haircut. I got to get trim. Like I like my long hair and I'm going to keep it long. But I have like these weird like little back tufts here. I I just I don't know what to do with. I got my hair cut recently. Same yeah, issue. So I like it up here I'm though. Gonna... This is the this is the look. And you look up here. It looks really good. If you get yeah up here, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I got the flow going. It's just like I, I it's like mullet in the back. And yeah. on Zoom sometimes it like curls out. Like so it's it's like I think that's the plan. Football managers just came out. Football manager twenty one. My guilty pleasure every year. <laughs> oh, so God. I'm. I'm just no lifing that right now. And yeah, I mean, like a super serious note that we're not ending on because we got the, the super sick question coming up. So don't miss out on that. But, you know, I think it's exciting that I got to talk to about it on the podcast because I think that really means that feels like a step forward. So even if it is quite somber or whatever word best describes it, like the fact that I'm like talking about it on the podcast now is enough too, mm-hmm. and and I think that's a great first step, you know. I feel it too, man. I really do. With that being said, it was a great conversation. We have Justin coming up, and I will talk to you next week, buddy. Yeah, that sounds great, man. Love you, dude. Love you too. See ya. Peace.